The Stockelberg leadership model is a strategic game in economics in which the leader firm moves first and then the follower firms move sequentially. It is named after the German economist Heinrich Friedrich von Stockelberg who published Market Structure and Equilibrium in 1934 which described the model. In game theory terms, the players of this game are a leader and a follower and they compete on quantity. The Stockelberg leader is sometimes referred to as the market leader. There are some further constraints upon the sustaining of a Stockelberg equilibrium. The leader must know ex ante that the follower observes its action. The follower must have no means of committing to a future non Stockelberg follower action and the leader must know this. Indeed, if the follower could commit to a Stockelberg leader action and the leader knew this, the leader's best response would be to play a Stockelberg follower action. Firms may engage in Stockelberg competition if one has some sort of advantage enabling it to move first. More generally, the leader must have commitment power. Moving observably first is the most obvious means of commitment, once the leader has made its move, it cannot undo it, it is committed to that action. Moving first may be possible if the leader was the incumbent monopoly of the industry and the follower is a new entrant. Holding excess capacity is another means of commitment. Subgame perfect Nash equilibrium The Stockelberg model can be solved to find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or equilibria, that is the strategy profile that serves best each player, given the strategies of the other player, and that entails every player playing in a Nash equilibrium in every subgame. In very general terms, let the price function for the industry be. Price is simply a function of total output, so is where the subscript 1 represents the leader and 2 represents the follower. Suppose firm I has the cost structure. The model is solved by backward induction. The leader considers what the best response of the follower is, that is how it will respond once it has observed the quantity of the leader. The leader then picks a quantity that maximizes its payoff anticipating the predicted response of the follower. The follower actually observes this and in equilibrium picks the expected quantity as a response. To calculate the SPNE, the best response functions of the follower must first be calculated. The profit of firm 2 is revenue minus cost. Revenue is the product of price and quantity and cost is given by the firm's cost structure, so profit is. The best response is to find the value of that maximizes given, that is given the output to the leader, the output that maximizes the follower's profit is found. Hence, the maximum of with respect to is to be found. First differentiate with respect to. Setting this to zero for maximization. The values of that satisfy this equation are the best responses. Now the best response function of the leader is considered. This function is calculated by considering the follower's output as a function of the leader's output, as just computed. The profit of firm 1 is, where is the follower's quantity as a function of the leader's quantity, namely the function calculated above. The best response is to find the value of that maximizes given, that is given the best response function of the follower, the output that maximizes the leader's profit is found. Hence, the maximum of with respect to is to be found. First, differentiate with respect to. Setting this to zero for maximization. Equals examples equals, the following example is very general. It assumes a generalized linear demand structure. And imposes some restrictions on cost structures for simplicity's sake so the problem can be resolved. And, for ease of computation. The follower's profit is. The maximization problem resolves to. Consider the leader's problem. Substituting for from the follower's problem. The maximization problem resolves to. Now solving for yields, the leader's optimal action. This is the leader's best response to the reaction of the follower in equilibrium. The follower's actual can now be found by feeding this into its reaction function calculated earlier. The Nash equilibria are all. It is clear that the leader has a significant advantage. Intuitively, if the leader was no better off than the follower, it would simply adopt a corner competition strategy. Plugging the follower's quantity, Q2 back into the leader's best response function will not yield Q1. 
This is because once leader has committed to an output and observed the followers it always wants to reduce its output ex post. However its inability to do so is what allows it to receive higher profits than under core not. Economic analysis, an extensive form representation is often used to analyze the Stockelberg leader follower model. Also referred to as AA Euro OE decision tray Euro, the model shows the combination of outputs and payoffs both firms have in the Stockelberg game. The image on the left depicts in extensive form a Stockelberg game. The payoffs are shown on the right. This example is fairly simple. There is a basic cost structure involving only marginal cost. The demand function is linear and price elasticity of demand is 1. However, it illustrates the leader's advantage. The follower wants to choose to maximize its payoff. Taking the first order derivative and equating it to zero yields is the maximum value of. The leader wants to choose to maximize its payoff. However, in equilibrium, it knows the follower will choose as above. So in fact the leader wants to maximize its payoff. By differentiation, the maximum payoff is given by. Feeding this into the follower's best response function yields. Suppose marginal costs were equal for the firms and in particular. The leader would produce 2,000 and the follower would produce 1,000. This would give the leader a profit of 2 million and the follower a profit of 1 million. Simply by moving first, the leader has accrued twice the profit of the follower. However, cornered profits here are 1.78 million apiece, so the leader has not gained much. But the follower has lost. However, this is example specific. There may be cases where a Stockelberg leader has huge gains beyond corner profit that approach monopoly profits. There may also be cases where the follower actually enjoys higher profits than the leader, but only because it, say, has much lower costs. Credible and non credible threats by the follower, if, after the leader had selected its equilibrium quantity, the follower deviated from the equilibrium and chose some non-optimal quantity it would not only hurt itself, but it could also hurt the leader. If the follower chose a much larger quantity than its best response, the market price would lower and the leader's profits would be stung, perhaps below core not level profits. In this case, the follower could announce to the leader before the game starts that unless the leader chooses a core not equilibrium quantity. The follower will choose a deviant quantity that will hit the leader's profits. After all, the quantity chosen by the leader in equilibrium is only optimal if the follower also plays in equilibrium. The leader is, however, in no danger. Once the leader has chosen its equilibrium quantity, it would be irrational for the follower to deviate because it too would be hurt. Once the leader has chosen, the follower is better off by playing on the equilibrium path. Hence, such a threat by the follower would not be credible. However, in an repeated Stockelberg game, the follower might adopt a punishment strategy where it threatens to punish the leader in the next period unless it chooses a non-optimal strategy in the current period. This threat is credible because it would be rational for the follower to punish in the next period so that the leader chooses Cournot quantities thereafter. Stockelberg compared with Cournot the Stockelberg and Cornut models are similar because in both competition is on quantity. However, as seen, the first move gives the leader in Stockelberg a crucial advantage. There is also the important assumption of perfect information in the Stockelberg game, the follower must observe the quantity chosen by the leader, otherwise the game reduces to Cournot. With imperfect information, the threats described above can be credible. If the follower cannot observe the leader's move, it is no longer irrational for the follower to choose, say, a core not level of quantity. However, it must be that there is imperfect information and the follower is unable to observe the leader's move because it is irrational for the follower not to observe if it can once the leader has moved. If it can observe, it will so that it can make the optimal decision. Any threat by the follower claiming that it will not observe even if it can is as uncredible as those above. This is an example of too much information hurting a player. In corner competition, it is the simultaneity of the game that results in neither player being at a disadvantage. Equals game theoretic considerations equals, as mentioned, imperfect information in a leadership game reduces to corner competition. However, 
Some cornered strategy profiles are sustained as Nash equilibria but can be eliminated as incredible threats by applying the solution concept of sub-game perfection. Indeed, it is the very thing that makes a cornered strategy profile a Nash equilibrium in a Stockelberg game that prevents it from being sub-game perfect. Consider a Stockelberg game in which, for some reason, the leader believes that whatever action it takes, the follower will choose a cornered quantity. If the leader played a Stockelberg action, that the follower will play Cornot. Hence it is non-optimal for the leader to play Stockelberg. In fact, its best response is to play Cornot quantity. Once it has done this, the best response of the follower is to play Cornot. Consider the following strategy profiles, the leader plays Cornot. The follower plays Cornot if the leader plays Cornot and the follower plays non Stockelberg if the leader plays Stockelberg and if the leader plays something else, the follower plays an arbitrary strategy. This profile is a Nash equilibrium. As argued above, on the equilibrium path play is a best response to a best response. However, playing Cornot would not have been the best response of the leader were it that the follower would play Stockelberg if it played Stockelberg. In this case, the best response of the leader would be to play Stockelberg. Hence, what makes this profile a Nash equilibrium is the fact that the follower would play non Stockelberg if the leader were to play Stockelberg. However, this very fact means that this profile is not a Nash equilibrium of the subgame starting when the leader has already played Stockelberg. If the leader has already played Stockelberg, the best response of the follower is to play Stockelberg. Hence, the strategy profile, which is core not, is not subgame perfect. Comparison with other oligopoly models In comparison with other oligopoly models, the aggregate Stockelberg outputs is greater than the aggregate Cornot output, but less than the aggregate Bertrand output. The Stockelberg price is lower than the Cornot price, but greater than the Bertrand price. The Stockelberg consumer surplus is greater than the Cornot consumer surplus, but lower than the Bertrand consumer surplus. The aggregate Stockelberg outputs is greater than pure monopoly or cartel, but less than the perfectly competitive output. The Stockelberg price is lower than the pure monopoly or cartel price, but greater than the perfectly competitive price. Applications The Stockelberg concept has been extended to dynamic Stockelberg games. See Simon and Cruz. With the addition of time as a dimension, phenomena not found in static games were discovered such as violation of the principle of optimality by the leader, Simon and Cruz. For a survey of applications of Stockelberg differential games to supply chain and marketing channels, CEAL in recent years, Stockelberg games have contributed a lot in the security domain where it is essential for the security personnel to protect some valuable resource and search for any potential threats to it. This is where it involves the security personnel to design his her strategy first so that irrespective of the strategy adopted by the thief, the resource remains safe. See also, Economic Theory, Cornut Competition, Bertrand Competition, Extensive Form Game, Industrial Organization, Mathematical Programming with Equilibrium Constraints. References H. von Stockelberg, Market Structure and Equilibrium First edition translation into English, Barzine, Urch and Hill, Springer 2011, 14, 134 p, ISBN 978-3-642-12585-0, M. Simon and J. B. Cruz, J. R., On the Stockelberg Strategy in Non-Zero-Sum Games, Journal of Optimization Theory and Applications, Volume 11, No. 5. May 1973, pages 533 to 555. M. Simon and J. B. Cruz, J. R. Additional aspects of the Stockelberg strategy in non-zero-sum games. Journal of Optimization Theory and Applications, Volume 11, Number 6, June 1973, pages 613 to 626. He, X. Prasat, A. C. T. S. P and Gutierrez, GA Survey of Stockelberg Differential Game Models in Supply and Marketing Channels, Journal of Systems Science and Systems Engineering, 16, 4, December 2007, 385-413. Available at http, 
Papers SSRN Com Papers CFM Abstracted equals 1,069,162, Feudenberg, D. in Tyrol, J. Game Theory, MIT Press. Gibbons, R. A. Primer and Game Theory, Harvester Wheat Sheaf. Osborne, M. J. and Rubenstein, A. A. Course in Game Theory, MIT Press, Oligopoly Theory Made Simple, Chapter 6 of Surfing Economics by Hugh Dixon.